Two months ago in Toronto was held the G20 summit. During that summit, over 1,100 people were arrested and several thousands had their rights violated when they were unreasonably searched, detained, and asked for identification and were unable to participate in a legitimate protest. In addition, we know that passerbys, people that were simply going about their business in the city of Toronto, were arrested. Many people spend over 20 hours uh, in a detention center without access to lawyers. And this in Canada in 2010. At that time, CCLA, the Canadian Civil Liberties Association, had a team of 50 monitors who were canvassing the streets and observing impartially what was going on. They were doing reports. And on June 20, uh, 29, two days after the summit was finished, we issued a preliminary report of our, our observations, which identified that certainly some, at some times the police behaved appropriately, but nevertheless there were significant instances of violation of constitutional rights that demanded accountability. Our reports, we sent our reports with these preliminary findings to Chief of Police Blair, to the Prime Minister of Canada, to the, the Premier of Ontario, and uh, are still awaiting responses as to what they intend to do about this. We continue to think that an independent public inquiry would be a cheaper way and a more efficient way of getting the answers that all Canadians deserve. A lot of money, over a billion if not two billion dollars were spent on the G20 summit. So over uh, two billion dollars uh, may have been spent on the security uh, apparatus for the G20. Uh, certainly, I think uh, we know that the, the, it's not the end of the spending. Uh, there is a class action that has been launched for people who were uh, unfairly and unconstitutionally arrested. And so we know that it will continue to cost the Canadian uh, uh, payers. Many of, uh, of uh, uh, processes are not underway. And it's time, I think, and it would that the federal government takes the leadership to ensure that the full picture is being put in front of Canadians. If we, we certainly support all agencies to do their own mea culpa and looking at what their role or how they could improve their own uh, contribution uh, to what happened at the G20. And we certainly are supporting the inquiries by the ombudsman or indeed uh, by the Ontario um, uh, respons office responsible for police conduct. So we are uh, certainly encouraged by the fact that these uh, public officials have taken upon themselves uh, to do uh, the work that needs to be done. Nevertheless, it is important that we know what was the role of CSIS, what was the role of the RCMP. CSIS being the uh, ability to inform on what was going on. We still don't know exactly what type of information precipitated the level of policing uh, that went on. Canadians are entitled to know when their money is spent in that way. We cannot simply sit back and trust that uh, everything that was done was done in, the perfect, uh, uh, in a perfectly reasonable manner. We should know whether indeed there was good reasons or not so good reasons for the way in which the policing took place. Certainly from the observations that the CCLA has taken, there was excessive police forces for what was massively protest, a protest that took place in a peaceful manner. The police have charged and have arrested many people for breach of the peace, but to arrest for breach of the peace, you need to have a breach of the peace. And certainly at the times where people were arrested, there was no breach of the peace. There was no riot. To read the riot act, you need the riot. And there was no riot. Certainly the vandalism, which needs to be condemned, was taking, had taken place on the Saturday afternoon. But that does not give the, rise, the, the right to the police to arrest people on the Sunday, massively, when they are peace, peacefully assembled and doing nothing wrong, then exercising their right to express themselves. We should remember the importance of the right to express oneself and the importance of the right to peacefully assemble 
in our Constitution. It is as important as the, as the right to vote. Rich people have their lobbyists to continue to influence uh, the government in between elections. Poor people have their feet. They must be heard, and the way in which they are, are heard is by uh, walking down the street and expressing their approval or disapproval of government policies. To challenge the right and to undermine the right to peacefully assemble is just as serious as undermining the right to vote. It is just as serious for our democracy. So, CCLA continues to be uh, concerned with the aftermath of the G20. It continues to, to be concerned that the appropriate accountability will be done for what happened. It is important, it is crucial because there will be other events, mass events, and we need to improve the level at which the policing can be done. We need clarity, and this was certainly not there in the G20. Citizens did not know what they were expected to do. They did not know what were that the law had changed under their feet. They did not know that the legal landscape was uh, done in a way that could reach their rights to the extent that it did. So it is important for the, for the future policing of mass events that we get some answers, some accountability, and some clarity. CCLA has been active in trying to ensure that the people responsible do respond. We have asked the Toronto Police for information as to which police forces from across the country were there and at what position and how were they displayed around the city. To this date, the, the Toronto Police Service has refused to communicate this information. We hope that when an access to information request, the, the information may be disclosed. We are continuing the, the work of asking questions about what went on, and it's important. I think that's the role of a Canadian Civil Liberties Association to continue to ask the questions. We will make submissions to the Auditor General as she explores the range of costs that were uh, uh, expanded for the security. She's going to be concerned about ensuring that we got value for our money, as she always does. But I think it is important to put the question as to whether there was too much policing and indeed whether that contributed to the escalation uh, of, of the interaction. Many international reports do mention that too much policing is indeed a way to undermine the right to, f to peacefully assemble. And it would be important. We will bring that uh, to the attention of the the Auditor General. We have called on the Government of Canada to take its responsibility here and provide Canadians with answers. We will continue to ask for this to be done. We are participating and certainly continuing to uh, participate in supporting people that make complaints about the way they were treated. We will continue to help people to exercise their rights in Canada. They should have had, they should have been treated with respect and to the extent that they want answers, that they want damage, or they want some actions to be taken, we will support them. CCLA thinks that Canadians deserve answers for what happened at the G20. And the only way to get answers, the complete answers that I think we all deserve, because of the money that was spent, and to ensure that indeed the money is not spent in court proceedings, but to give appropriate answers. Uh, to all Canadians, we invite you to sign a petition demanding that Prime Minister Harper appoint an independent commission in what went on at the G20. We have 4,000 signatures to our petition and we're hoping to reach 5,000 if you sign and then we can send it for the beginning of the House of Commons in the next little while. So we invite you to sign our petition right away. Thank you.